Adrian Newey signs for Austin Martin. And with the amount of money that rivals most drivers on the grid, there's only a few drivers. What does this 65 year old from Essex really bring to the table? Arguably, and I only say arguably because Colin Chapman exists. He is the greatest designer of cars and runner of aerodynamics department in the world and in history, really. Newey started off working with March he designed one of their cars there, and then he quickly moved on to Williams with the FW14 and 14B. Oh, back then, uh, you could drive, use a car for more than one season without becoming completely irrelevant. 17 wins, 38 podiums, 21 poles. McLaren MP4 slash 13, over one season, nine wins, 20 podiums, 12 poles. The RB6, the 2010 car that won Sebastian Vettel his first world championship. Nine wins, 20 podiums, 15 poles. And most notably and most recently, the RB19. That's Max Verstappen's car from last year with the most winning car ever made, winning 95% of races it started in. 21 wins. 30 podiums and 14 poles. That's a pretty good record over a long, long time. We're talking 1990 all the way up to today. 30 plus years of making winning cars. And when I say winning cars, I mean strong, strong winning cars. Back in the day, these, these cars were just unbelievable. All through the V10 era, he's worked on tons of different designs. He knows about tons of different types of cars. But the real question, having known what Adrian Newey can bring to the table, is why would he choose Austin Martin? And there's really not one hammer down reason why I think he's chosen Austin Martin, but more like a bunch of different things that check boxes for him. So let's start by going through that list and see what kind of boxes are being checked for Adrian Newey. So first off, he has nothing to prove. There's nothing more really that he can do. After making the RB19, which is arguably the best car ever made in modern day Formula One, I don't think his wants and needs are really the same as they were 10, 20, 30 years ago. I think he's more looking to be able to refine his craft and have fun. Me personally, I like rooting for the underdog. I like somebody who's not on top of their game. I didn't like Michael Schumacher when he was at his best. I didn't like Hamilton when he was at his best. I didn't like Sebastian Vettel when he was at his best. And I think Adrian Newey would like to have that feeling to take a team who is not necessarily doing very well and bring them to greatness. And he's done this several times. In fact, most of these cars that I've mentioned, mentioned the Williams and McLaren specifically, he worked on those cars for really only one year. When he arrived at Williams, he did, he worked on the, the incumbent car, but it was the FW that he worked on it was really it's his first car there. And it, it, it won so well. So it, it's obvious that it doesn't take him a long time to turn around a team. I would say during the Mercedes dominance is really where he wasn't shining as much. But even then, it was still an okay car uh, that he churned out those years. It just happened to be a formula that was more designed around an engine and an engine formula than it is than it was an aerodynamics formula. So what are the boxes that I'm talking about? First of all, development. Austin Martin ticks a major box. He has to have the tools in order to create these great cars these days. He wouldn't go to Alpine, for instance, who is using really old facilities and really old buildings and stuff like that, and doesn't have a team that can really support him. Keep in mind, he is a visionary. He will direct a car in a direction not necessarily build every single piece on the car. So Austin Martin ticks a great box. As you can see here, their technology campus has been amazing. They have developed so much in the past couple of years. It's argued that they will have the most to give Adrian Newey in order to create that amazing car. Their wind tunnel is top notch. They got more than 700 staff going into building one and even more in building two and more to come as well. They don't plan on slowing down. Uh, the Strolls have put everything they have into this. Second of all, their leadership. They have 
some of the best people that they've scooped up over the past couple of years. Enrico Cardiel is one of the biggest ones. He's from Ferrari. He's a very good aerodynamicist in his own right, and he joined the team. They snatched him up. As well, we have Dan Fallows, who's been there forever. So he's the technical director. The technical visionary will be Enrico Fermi. And then the aerodynamic uh, visionary will be Adrian Newey. So that team together really does cement much like what we saw at Red Bull 15 years ago with Wheatley, Adrian Newey, and some of the other key figures over there. I think as far as Aston Martin goes, one of their less prominent people in the team is Mike Crack. He's, he's, I know he's good. He doesn't seem to be like a visionary such as like Zach Brown or Christian Horner or possibly Benotto, Arriva Bene. There's been lots of names that I would throw out that maybe at times have been better, better than Mike Crack. He's definitely not bad. I just don't think he's the best in the world, but I don't think that really matters. And, the, and last and most importantly, keep in mind what I just talked about. Adrian Newey couldn't win Red Bull championships when the formula was not focused on aerodynamics. Now, I would argue that this formula in 2026, which is probably where we're going to see the biggest part of Adrian Newey on the Austin Martin cars in 2026, uh, because 2025 is still everything's really frozen and and 2026 is really where you're going to want to put most of your money into anyway because of the change in rules, the complete change of the car and a lot of change in the way we're going as far as engine goes as well. It's the start of the whole thing changing. So what Aston Martin has is they have backing to cover off those things. Adrian Newey is not going to go to want to go to a team if the team that he's going to doesn't have all the other boxes checked in order for his job to make a difference. If they don't have a good engine, he would never go to Alpine because they don't have their engine situation down. I don't think he would ever go to like a Williams or a customer team like McLaren because you can easily have a Mercedes engine not be good in 2026 for whatever reason. Or you could have a Renault engine not be good in 2026. Or you could have one of the customer teams like we did 10, 15 years ago where you would get a B-spec engine for that year just because of the way the regulations work and the way the development worked. You saw when Toro Rosso was driving that they often would get a bad Ferrari engine and that would just mean that they weren't very good at the time. Same when they were supplied by Renault. You would just get bad Renault engines just because you were a second team. So I don't think you would ever end up there. And what Austin Martin has is they have several things to cover off. First, they have Honda. And Honda is known for being able to create an engine. Most people don't know, but Ross Braun, when he took the team then, that was a Honda car. They just happened to want to pull out at the time, so they bought it up and they drove it. And that was an amazing car. Honda also knows how to develop heavily, heavily. They took that pile of donkey trash that McLaren had and turned it into a winning car at Red Bull. I would say the biggest downside of Honda is they always have kind of only have one toe in the bathtub. They're always very flighty on leaving. They were leaving a couple years ago until they started winning championships and now they're all in. So there's a bit of a question mark there, but they have shown in the past that they can make a good car. The other thing they have is they have a Ramco and now with this announcement not too long ago, they have Valvoline. I believe personally that the 2026 regulations and more importantly, 2028 regulations will be heavily sided with fuel. This is going to be a fuel formula coming up, or at least it has high potential to be a fuel formula. And what does that mean? Well, it means that you're going to have to have a big oil backer in order to be able to create and have the laboratories to make your lubrication and your fuel in-house so that what you bring to the table is extra power that you're getting from that. Keep in mind we're going even more hybrid but eventually they want to go to a more combustion engine but that is heavily influenced from biofuels and what you're going to need to know for that is oil. Oil, fuel, anything like that. Backing from Aramco and more importantly backing from Valvoline I think are really Valvoline are one of the top companies to support teams in developing fuel. Uh, they're going to be very important. We see Ferrari has Shell, McLaren has Gulf, the new Audi department has Castrol. 
you're seeing teams really latch on in the past four or five years to certain oil producers so that they can get that extra horsepower from the engine that some of these guys know how to do. So they have those other boxes ticked. So he doesn't want to walk into a team that's going to be much like Red Bull was from 2015 to 2019. Kind of nowhere, really. They lost out in the engine department and their engine woes, and that made them not competitive, and it made all the goodness that Mui brings kind of pointless. So he doesn't really would be, want to be walking into a team that doesn't have that. Now, I would argue half the teams on the grid have a lot of those backers, but until they announced Val Valvoline, I thought maybe Austin Martin was kind of on the fence with Ramco. They're good, but it, to announce Valvoline as well means that you have even more boxes ticked. So that's another important part there. The other important part is the regulations. These are the 2026 regulations. You can go on the FAO website and there's a nice video, a full press release. They notch them all down. But ultimately, this is a weird regulation. Because the car is so underpowered, they're looking to create many aerodynamic systems to make that car be slippery in a straight line but super high in downforce in the corners. So there's no more DRS, but there's lots of this active aero systems. And if you know Adrian Yu in the stuff he's done in the past, active aero is his baby. He's really, really, really good at it. In fact, when they first announced those DRS and curse systems in the very early uh, times, he was quite good at it. And, and I think this new 2026 car really harkens back to the days of more simpler arrow and being able to use the small space that you have. Keep in mind, this car is quite a bit smaller, not, not as small as it used to be maybe 15 years ago, but in my opinion, the very letterbox rear wing, the sim simply turning veins that they have on the front wing, as far as these renders go, it looks like something that would really give him a challenge and that would be in his wheelhouse. It looks like an old car. If you, I don't have the renders on me now, but if you stack this car up to ne next to the West car, they're very, very similar. Maybe not quite quite in size, but the way that it works, it looks like it's going to be an Adrian Newey kind of thing. So if these 2026 regulations look like crap, like it was really going to be a fuel and engine regulation kind of thing, I think you would have saw Adrian Newey take his gardening leave and extend it until 2028, or maybe just retire altogether. But because the 2026 regulations seem as though it's really gonna be an aerodynamic kind of thing, at least partially, initially, I think that really he's gonna bring a lot to the table when it comes to aerodynamics in 2026. And the last thing is really the whole package. The Honda, the regulations, the other things that he gets. So right now, and probably next year, Austin Martin isn't very good. I would be very surprised if they make a push in 2025 to be really, really good. It would be great if they brought themselves a lot closer to the top four teams. Having Honda there and having this whole package together is really, I think, what's going to do it for him. And what he's going to be able to bring to the table is really going to matter because all of those boxes are ticked. So in 2025, Austin Martin probably won't be that good, which means in 2026, they will have a higher amount of... Uh, wind tunnel time so he'll be able to work his magic he'll be able to develop fully in the year we can see how much that has affected Red Bull this year because of the penalties they had for overspending and being in first for so much they're not they don't their wind tunnel time is way down and that really does affect the team so what I think is Adrian Yu is going to be able to take that time that Aston Martin will probably be in fifth by the end of the year, next year probably as well, unless something crazy happens. But we see that they have that ability to have that time and make the development, make the push and probably be good in 2026. The other thing they also have is Fernando Alonso, great development driver. He doesn't necessarily work well with his teammates. But I think the knowledge that he brings to the table, he is the most experienced guy on the grid. He's been there the longest. And the stuff that he brings to the table will be able to, and, and other drivers had mentioned this, I don't have the quotes on me right now, but they've mentioned that when you work with Adrian Newey, he talks to the drivers. He pencils stuff down in his book and he gets to work. If they say something, he listens to it. So it's good to have Fernando Alonso there being able to do that. They also have Stoffel van Duren. He is their backup driver right now. And it, probably a lot of the testing that will happen for 2026 
is going to be in the simulator in late 2025 and in the offseason. Stoffel Van Dorn has proven time and time again that he is a great development driver. He's he's up there. I think he's probably up there close to Pedro De La, De La Rosa, who was, in my opinion, the best development driver of all time. In fact, he still does it to this day. And he still holds fastest lap times around some of these tracks because he was that good at feeling out a car. And Stoffel Van Dorn, people have said that he is also quite good. The downside of the Stroll Empire is the particular driver that Papa Stroll is there to support. Lance is appalling. He doesn't know where to look. He doesn't know where to go. He doesn't know what the car feels like. He doesn't know how to produce anything. I think he's only had one good drive, in my opinion, in his entire six or seven years. And he hasn't gotten any better. He knows how to be a little bit less controversial, although it's only been about eight months since he's had his big controversial thing where he had... Well, that's not true, because he ran in the back of Danny Rick this year, so I don't know. Um, I just don't think he's very good, and it's difficult to develop a car when you don't have two inputs from two drivers coming forward. We know Lance isn't good at it, because you see Fernando Alonso coming over the radio and saying, oh, my brake bias is really good at this point. Make sure to make, uh, let Lance know. Fernando Alonso doesn't do that for his teammates, but he does when he knows that the teammate is never, ever going to be as good as him. I will say that Lance has looked a little bit better recently, uh, mostly because of the mixed conditions that we've had, and he's pretty good in those, those kind of situations. But really, that's the downfall of joining Stroll and Aston Martin, you're going to have to join Stroll and Aston Martin. I don't think he's going to regret his decision, um, and I think he's really going to be able to do a lot. At the very least, he's going to be paid very well. Very well. Like, better than most drivers would be. Um, and they're the highest paid on the team, generally. So it's good for him. I think it's good for Red Bull. Or I think it's good for Aston Martin. I think it's good for Formula One, too. It creates a narrative. It creates a story. Everybody wants to see the underdog win. Nobody really... I mean, we love to see our favorite teams win. I love when McLaren will win. I've been a McLaren fan for 15 years or so. Ever since uh, Jensen Button joined them, uh, I've been a McLaren fan. And I really think that people love to see that happen. But we like an underdog story. We love when Pierre Gasly won. We like when those things happen. We like when Albon finishes in the top six. It's amazing to see a low down team do well. And I think a rise of Austin Martin, which we saw a few years ago when that happened, it was great to see. People were excited. People were happy that that happened. And I think we'll see that again. So I think it's good for the sport. And I think the only regret that he'll have is not going to Ferrari. Because there's a lot of things that people love to do. We saw we saw the red the original red uh, Red Bull Golden Boy Sebastian Vettel go to Ferrari. Why? Because it was his favorite team. Michael Schumacher drove there. A very iconic place to be, and to not work with Lewis Hamilton. Now Lewis drove his McLaren car just as as Lewis was coming in, so he's touched newy kind of influence but not a full car by him. So he really didn't work with him. And he always said he wanted to do that. So will he hang around? I mean, he's not a driver. He's not relying on his body, only his mind. So he could potentially do a stint in Aston Martin and then move to Ferrari later on. I don't know, hard to say. He is 65. Really a full cycle for development is four or five years. So he's gonna have to spend four or five years at Aston Martin before you're gonna see full fruits of his labor. I think the 2026 car will probably be all of him, and then the 2027 car will be the best of him. So we'll have to see. It will depend on a million things. This could turn into a fuel formula. It could be all down to Shell getting it right, nobody else getting it right, or maybe Aramco will get it right. I think it's gonna be heavily divisible by fuel. Uh, that's gonna be the common denominator for a good team coming up in 2026. Right, and if not 2026, 2028 when they change to full biofuels. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second. And I'll see you guys next time.